else. Just realized I have these red marks right here. I had my glasses on earlier, so disregard. Anyway, we're here today to talk about setting up an enclosure for your white tree frog. I recently just set up this guy in the background here for my three adult white tree frogs. Um, and I did my first custom build background, which was a great learning experience. But I thought I'd go over how I did it with you all and you guys can maybe take some bits and pieces of information with you to use in your future enclosure builds. So before we get into all the custom background, decorating, exciting stuff, let's talk about white tree frogs and what requirements they need for their enclosures. All right, so this is a white tree frog. This is one of mine. Her name is Salad. Um, she is under a year still, so she's definitely not full grown. As you can see, I am wearing gloves because frogs have very sensitive skin that can easily absorb um, what's on your hands. So it's very important that you either have clean hands with no soap or anything on them or you wear um, protective gloves like I'm doing right now. Frogs also don't love being handled. So now that you got to see her, I'm gonna go ahead and put her back. White's tree frogs are also known as dumpy frogs. Um, they are a species of frog that come from Australia. They are relatively hardy and a little bit easier to keep um, as far as amphibians go. But personally, in my opinion, no amphibian or reptile is easy to care for. I feel like they all have very, very specific needs. However, this species does tend to be a bit more forgiving but please, please don't take that as an excuse to be neglectful or not do your research. But that being said, if you've done your research and you know you're ready for a frog, a white tree frog can be the perfect first frog for you. Now for enclosure. So white tree frogs are arboreal. So height is going to be much more important for your frogs as opposed to width. They do get fairly large, um, so a minimum of about an 18 by 18 by 24 can house a couple of tree frogs, but obviously with most other reptiles and, and amphibians, the bigger the better is always ideal. My enclosure that you see in the background here is by Ecoflex. It is 36 inches high by 30 inches deep and 24 inches wide. I feel like it's the perfect size for my three white tree frogs. Uh, it was really easy to put together and it looks nice, so I'm pretty happy with it. So for temperature with white tree frogs, they generally tolerate a range between 75 to 85 degrees. A nighttime drop is healthy for them and they can go down to about the 65, 68 degree range. They are prone to bacterial infection, so a stagnant, humid environment is going to be dangerous for them. Um, so make sure when searching for an enclosure, it's something that holds humidity while at the same time has plenty of ventilation. So my enclosure back here does have a screen top and then slits on the side for ventilation as well. With humidity, you want to aim for about a 50% range um, up to about a 70% spike. You can do this by misting their enclosure multiple times a day. I live in Colorado. It's very dry here, so I installed a mister. With the proper care, these guys can also live a pretty long time. They can live up to 15 years in captivity. Now that I've got all the basics out of the way, um, let's go ahead and start their enclosure build. Just unpacking the enclosure right now. My cat really likes the styrofoam. Um, she's not being helpful at all, but this is the beginning of the new froggy mansion. In this next section, I am using big gap filler to 
to do the custom background. I also got some little plastic pots from Home Depot that I'm going to use as well and some cork bark. And now for another time lapse of me putting this all together. I actually really enjoyed doing this, however be ready to use a lot of gap filler. Um, I think I went through probably about five, maybe six cans. After the spray foam was done, I had to let it sit for 24 hours to let it cure before I took this Dremel and started carving away to make it look, I guess, kind of cave-like and make shapes and um, surfaces look the way that I wanted it to. I feel like using the Dremel was definitely the way to go with this. I think using something else like a knife or something like that might be a little more difficult and take more time. So I failed to get footage of the last step, but I used all-purpose silicone and then a cocoa husk to give it this look for the background. Now I'm setting up the bioactive enclosure. I should also add that it took about a week for the silicone and cocoa husk layer to cure before I was able to set up this bioactive landscape. And it also smelled really bad for a full week. Although this was a really time consuming project and a lot of work and a lot of money, I really, really love the way it turned out. I even added a misting system to make my life a little bit easier. I live in Colorado, it's really dry here, so this will save me a lot of time. Now it's time for the best part, and I get to add my sweet frogs to their new enclosure. Hope they like it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed it or learned something, please like and subscribe. I'm new here, and it helps a bunch. Have a great day.